Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Peoples here. Uh, in this section of our notes, we are going to be uh, having two learning targets to accomplish. Uh, the first is I can describe how the Treaty of Versailles led to the start of World War II. And the second is I can describe why the United States joined the war in 1941. Now, to start with this, uh, just a reminder, the Treaty of Versailles was the treaty that ended World War I. Uh, it was when the Allies asked Germany, or forced Germany, to get rid of their military and to pay a whole bunch of money in war damages in order to make up for having started the war in the eyes of the Allies. And so the Treaty of Versailles, uh, it's important for you to remember what that was in order to accomplish this learning target. All right, now to start talking about World War II, we have to talk about the Depression. Uh, when the Great Depression happens in the United States, at that time, the United States was the strongest, most economically powerful country in the world. Uh, after World War I, the United States did not uh, have any damages to its mainland. Um, and so our businesses, our economy was very much uh, stronger than those in Europe. Europe was completely destroyed after World War I. Uh, so when the Great Depression hits in the 1930s uh, in the United States, it also causes a worldwide depression because a lot of those countries in Europe were receiving uh, money from the United States uh, to help rebuild themselves. And so as that happens, as the depression takes place around the world, um, in countries where the governments weren't very stable, uh, leaders were able to emerge and take control. And so what you have here in the 1930s is you have a bunch of European countries moving towards totalitarianism, which is a political system where the government controls every aspect of citizens' lives. Total control. Um, in Italy in the 1920s, the, one of the leaders that you're going to need to know uh, the name of during World War II, uh, in Italy his name was Benito Mussolini, and he gained complete control of Italy in 1922. And uh, his rule was based on fascism, which is a political system where the state is seen as more important than the individuals. And in the 1930s, he began to expand his territory, uh, specifically in places in Africa. Uh, and so here's a picture of what Benito Mussolini looks like. There's Benito Mussolini, um, a dictator and part of, eventually, part of the Axis powers. <clears throat> Many of you have heard from your classmates about Adolf Hitler and his rise to power. Um, Adolf Hitler uh, took over Germany in the 1930s. He officially becomes chancellor by being elected to that position uh, in 1933. And once he had that power, he then takes over the entire government. Um, he was a member of a party called the National Socialist Party, or for short, they were called the Nazis. And uh, Hitler's government uh, and his rule was based on blaming others for Germany's problems, uh, including Jews and communists. Um, we know this because when he was in jail, at one point Hitler goes to jail and he writes a book and he talks about his hatred for Jews and he talks about his hatred for communists and specifically Russians. Okay, And so Adolf Hitler takes control in the 1930s. Uh, in case you don't know what he looks like, this is Adolf Hitler. And then, uh, so those are two of the Axis powers. Those are two people who gain control because of uh, the economic situation in Europe. Now, Adolf Hitler used the Treaty of Versailles as a way to unite Germans. Uh, he blamed Jews for having signed that treaty, and he blamed... Uh, communists as being part of the government to gain control of the government. And so Adolf Hitler uses the Treaty of Versailles and the whole anger about that treaty to gain that power. Uh, and then once he has the power, he holds onto it very tightly. Another leader that you need to know is uh, the leader of Russia. His name was Joseph Stalin. Stalin excuse me. 
He became the dictator of the Soviet Union by 1928. Uh, he was a communist ruler, um, and he caught, he basically killed anybody that didn't agree with him. And so he was a dictator like Hitler. Um, he was ruthless like Hitler, but Joseph Stalin and the Soviet Union were on the side of the United States and the other allied powers during World War II. So that's really important to remember. Um, although Joseph Stalin is a dictator, he is someone, um, or his country is the country that is connected with the United States and the Allies. Um, here's a picture of Joseph Stalin. There you go. And then the last um, person we're going to talk about is the Emperor of Japan. His name was Emperor Hirohito. Um, and he was a young emperor, and he was very easily persuaded by his government officials and specifically the group of military leaders. Um, these military leaders slowly gain control of the government. Um, and so although the emperor is in charge, they kept the emperor secluded and only told him certain things to keep him uh, making the decisions that they wanted him to make. By the 1930s, uh, the military leaders had more influence than the Japanese emperor. Uh, they wanted to build a large Japanese empire in East Asia. Uh, and at one point in the 1930s, the Japanese invade China and kill hundreds of thousands of people very brutally. Um, some of those scenes uh, are, are difficult to watch uh, on the newsreels. And the United States um, had a number of times told Japan that they needed to stop, uh, and Japan continued to try and expand their land. So these are the leaders that we have here at the start of World War II. There's a picture of Emperor Hirohito. Uh, the mi military leaders of Japan told their people that their emperor was a god. Not like God, but a god. And so the, they used that as a motivating factor to get the Japanese soldiers uh, and people to rally around the emperor. Um, and to create this nationalism, this pride in their country uh, as they try to expand their territory. Okay, So all of these leaders uh, come together uh, as part of different countries and when World War II starts they start to take sides. Italy, uh, Benito Mussolini, sides with Hitler from Germany. Uh, Emperor Hirohito and the military leaders of Japan side with Germany and Italy and they become the Axis powers while Britain, France and the Soviet Union form the Allies <clears throat> and eventually the United States after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Uh, now I haven't talked about the United States president his name was Franklin Roosevelt uh, you know him uh, because we you, you read about him you learned about him in the Great Depression unit so he is still president during World War II um, so Franklin Roosevelt is the United States president. <clears throat> okay, so World War II begins with some of these countries trying to expand their territory. Uh, you have Japan and Asia trying to take over places in China. Uh, you have Italy trying to take over places in Africa. And then in Germany, when Hitler gains control, he dreams of avenging. Germany's defeat in World War I. And he immediately breaks the Treaty of Versailles. One of the things in the treaty was that Germany couldn't, could only have a military that was uh, really small. Hitler goes to work right away uh, helping people in Germany get jobs by creating factories building weapons. And so very quickly Germany begins to pull itself out of the Great Depression by building military weapons. And this was breaks the Treaty of Versailles. He rebuilds the German military um, and then he invades an area between, next to France. Uh, it's still part of Germany but it's it's a border area between Germany and France and it's called the Rhineland. Hitler invades that area as a way to show the world that he's not going to be paying attention to the Treaty of Versailles. If we look at this map of Europe you can see here's Germany. Um, when I highlight it, this is what Hitler was in charge of when he gained control of the country. The area that you see right here, this area right here, was called the Rhineland. It's right on the Rhine River. 
and it was supposed to be empty of military vehicles. And that was to provide France and Belgium and the Netherlands uh, an opportunity to protect themselves in case Germany wanted to do something like they did in World War I. Well, Hitler's first act of breaking the Treaty of Versailles after rebuilding his military was to move military vehicles into the Rhineland. And that happens in 1936. Now, the world is upset about this, but at the same time, the world doesn't do anything to stop it. Uh, remember, the League of Nations isn't very strong, and so the League of Nations tells Hitler to stop, but Hitler doesn't listen to them. Matter of fact, in 1936, their Summer Olympics were held in the capital of Germany, uh, in Berlin. And so uh, that, that didn't even stop uh, the Olympics from happening when he took over that Rhineland. Okay. Um, Germany then signs an alliance with Italy, and they form what's called the Axis Powers. And Japan later joins this pact. Let's make sure you see that. Um, <clears throat> here you can see Adolf Hitler, uh, and he's on parade, and you can see his followers cheering for him, the German people cheering for him. Uh, many of the German people uh, that were not Jewish, um, many of the German people were happy about what Hitler was doing for their country. He created a sense of pride. Uh, he gave jobs to people. He helped the economy. And that made people trust in what he was doing. Now, there were others who saw through uh, what Hitler was doing, and they, uh, and they didn't believe all of the ceremony and all of the stuff that you see here in this picture. Uh, but that number was very few, and they were forced to be quiet. Uh, otherwise, they may, be of, may have been thrown in prison or, or a camp of some sort. And so those people that did disagree with Hitler, they didn't say much out loud because there was a possibility of them being put in jail or a camp. And we're going to talk more about that in class. <clears throat> okay, we'll come back and we'll talk about how uh, Hitler starts to take over parts of Europe and, and gains control and the official start of World War II. Um, in this video you should have seen how the Treaty of Versailles was broken by Germany and how that Treaty of Versailles led to an opportunity for Hitler to begin this this buildup of military. Um, if you have questions please let me know in class and we'll talk soon.